The Knicks have signed multiple players to training camp deals. And one of those players is TJ Warren. And he went off recently during Knicks practice. He was playing against Mikel Bridges, other Knicks players, and he was cooking them on one-on-ones. We're also going to take a look at exactly what other players the Knicks added to this roster. We're going to break down all of these latest reports and so much more today. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now and make sure you have notifications turned on so you don't miss a second of the new content. And now, let's get started. The Knicks signed veteran TJ Warren to an Exhibit 10 contract. He is now joining the Knicks in training camp. And he is posing a lot of concerns for some players going up against him. Because recently, during practice, when Carl Anthony Towns was finally able to join, and we were able to see all of the players go against each other and what they could do during practice, we saw TJ Warren, the newest Nick, start cooking people on one on one drills. Let's take a look at exactly what he was doing during practice. So, as you can see, we have newest Nick, TJ Warren. Going up against Mikel Bridges right there. One-on-one -on -one drill. Boom. Nails it. Gets it on him, even though he's putting defense on him. Then he goes against Landry Shamit. You might see that at some point in time. And he goes up against another defender. Boom. Shoots it over them and cooks him. Warren, during this workout, was going off on anybody he was facing up against. And we're talking about not just these couple of possessions we're looking at right now. He was doing this for a significant period of time. This is significant because the Knicks still need another player to add to this roster. We already know and we expect Landry Shamit will make this team. But we need another player on this team. Potentially somebody with size we can add to the roster. And even though he's a little bit older and a long ways away from his time in the bubble when he was going off, giving us 20-point performances, 25-point performances, 50-point performances. He was legendary during that time. Now, I don't think the Knicks are going to get that version of him. But if he can come into camp locked in, which it looks like he is, he might be able to carve out a spot for himself on this roster. The Knicks still need more size. I wish they would add more centers to this roster because, in my opinion, they need to do that. That's how you push your current centers on this team. Carl Anthony Towns, Preston Achua, especially Jericho Sims. You need more centers on this team to push those players to be better. But unfortunately, even though the Knicks had the opportunity to do that, they chose to go in a different direction. And instead, they signed a bunch of forwards and some guards. Let's break down exactly who the Knicks added to this training camp roster. Shout out to Knicks videos and Ian Bagley for giving us the following information. As we mentioned earlier, the Knicks signed TJ Warren a very good wing and a veteran in this league to an Exhibit 10 contract. I want to mention that Warren played 11 games for the Timberwolves last season, and he averaged 3.7 points and two rebounds per game. But as New York basketball mentions here, in the bubble, he was legendary. And you never know, potentially, he can become legendary again. All he needs is the belief and the time to play. And I think on this roster, he might be able to get it, but it all depends on what he does during training camp and if he's able to earn a roster spot. But those weren't the only moves the Knicks made to this roster. They made a couple of other additions to this team. As we announced recently, we dropped a video about this actually. Chumo Kiki rejoined the Knicks on an Exhibit 10 deal after he was waived to make room for the Carl Anthony Towns deal. And then, in a bit of a shocking move, the Knicks signed Alex O'Connell and Damian Ba to exhibit 10 deals. Now, the reason I say this is a bit of a shock is because, again, they need more size on the team. Why would you go out and get more guards? 6'4 and 6'6, respectively. I still don't understand why they did this when they could have used those roster spots to add more size to this team. We need centers. I think I've said it in a number of videos. Our depth at the center position is extremely poor. It's Cat, it's Achua, and it's Sims. That's it. The only other players we can play at center is if we stretch our players out to play them at that position. We're talking about potentially OG Ananobi. 
and other players like that. But we shouldn't have to do that. We should have more depth at the center position. And if we have training camp contracts available, why utilize them to give them to more guards? Why not bring more centers in here who can push your current centers and maybe one of them shows out, breaks out, and they can make the roster and they become your backup center. All I'm saying is we have a desperate need at center right now. Everybody knows it. The entire league knows it. Our front office knows it. They're trying to address that situation as we speak. It's no secret. They're taking calls to try to trade Mitchell Robinson. Now, why would they be doing that? Because they know they need somebody who's available and active on this team that plays center. That's not Mitchell Robinson, at least not anymore. That's why they need to make sure they're making the right moves. Adding two guards, even though I really like Damian Ba, I think he's a good player. And I remember what he was doing with the Lakers. He was going off 27 points, 25 points. He had some great games. That's not the point, though. The point is, did we need another guard? We didn't. We needed more size. Give me somebody who's 6'9", 6'10", 7 foot. We need that at camp. Right now, we just don't have enough size. And that's my concern because think about it. What happens if Cat fouls out or Cat gets into foul trouble during one of these games? Then who do we have to rely on to potentially play center? Jericho Sims and Preston Achua? I don't know about you guys, but for a team that wants to win a championship, just having those two options is not enough. It's concerning, and you can't add Mitch there till January 2025. And by the way, I think by the time Mitch is able to return, New York will likely trade him by that point to get another impactful player on this team. And it's not because they don't like Mitch. What they don't like is his availability or lack thereof. And that's what I dislike. That's what a lot of fans dislike. It's never been about his ability or what he can do when he's healthy on the court. It's always about when is he going to be available. Each and every season, he misses so many games. And now this year, he can't even start the season for us. But going back to the Knicks signings, I'm not too upset about TJ Warren and Chumo Okiki. Between the two, I don't really mind either if they make the roster. I would slightly give an edge to Okiki just because he's younger and he's defensive-minded. 3 and D specialist. So I do really appreciate that. But... If TJ Warren can turn back the clock just a little bit and start cooking people each and every practice like he was doing recently, he might make a case to make the roster. I don't think Tom Thibodeau cares about his age. He's 31. Chumo Kiki, I believe, is 26 or 27, so he's younger. But that doesn't matter to Thibs right now. What matters is having people on this team that understands what it means to win and win on a large stage. And I think if push comes to shove, is Tom Thibodeau picking the rookies? Is he picking the younger talent? Or is he picking the more experienced veterans? I think he goes with veterans. Every single time he's asked about the roster or talks about the roster, he doesn't talk too much about the rookies. But he does speak about campaign. He does speak about Landry Shamit. That goes to show you, when it comes to next season, those two players under Tom Thibodeau are going to get a lot of playing time because without Dante DiVincenzo, those minutes are going to have to go somewhere. And yes, Deuce McBride is going to take the bulk of it, but not all of it. Some of those other minutes, they're going to go to campaign. They're going to go to Landry Shamit. And shout out to Steph Bondi of the New York Post for giving us the following information. After the town's trade, the Knicks have three roster spots open for non-guaranteed contracts or players on two-way deals. They have to fill two of them. Landry Shamit will get one. The other one, in my opinion, will be the one with size. So that is either going to be TJ Warren or Chumo Kiki. Either way, you can't really go wrong. I would go with the one that is cooking in practice. Right now, that's TJ Warren. But maybe tomorrow, that's Chumo Kiki. I would gauge it based off of that and give that roster spot to whoever deserves it. Landry Shamit, he has a huge relationship to some of the key players on this team already. Tom Thibodeau loves him. He speaks about him after practice almost each and every day, including campaign. So that tells you everything you need to know about the guard rotation for next season. Even though we want to see the rookies and maybe we might see them situationally, I think we have to prepare ourselves that this Knicks team next season will run out vets when they have to run out vets. But other than that, the rookies will not get a chance to shine unless 
situations call for it. Regardless of who makes the roster, though, in my opinion, it doesn't really matter because once they make this team, they'll be what? The 13th man, the 14th man off the bench. Even if that's the case, they're likely not going to see any real playing time for the Knicks. Tom Thibodeau is likely going to play nine players mainly. Now, maybe expand the rotation to 10 early on just to test it, see what's going on, see what players work with each other. And then once that is tested and he understands what works, he's going to reduce it to nine because nine has given him the best success over the last few seasons. You got to ask yourself, if nine gives you the best success that you've ever seen, do you go away from it or do you embrace it? I think with Tom Thibodeau, we all know he's going to embrace it because he embraces winning. And anything in his opinion that leads him to more winning, he's going to do more of. So I would expect that. Although, selfishly, I hope he plays 10 players consistently because that way all of your starters rest. And if you can reduce their minutes and keep them fresh and healthy every single game, it's going to benefit you come the postseason. And that's where you need them healthy. A healthy Knicks team come this postseason is the most deadliest team in the Eastern Conference. Maybe one of the most deadliest teams in the NBA. We just have to wait and see it all come together. But Cat and JB, that pick and roll, that pick and pop, whatever they do together, it's going to be magic because those two players are all-stars. They're magical in their own right. And together, they're going to be an unstoppable force. But what about you guys? What do you think about the Knicks signing all of these recent players? We're talking about TJ Warren. We're talking about Chumo Kiki. We're talking about Alex O'Connell. We're talking about Damian Ba. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, guys. And do you agree with me? Do you think the Knicks should have used those roster spots to add centers so we could have more size at camp? Let me know, guys, because honestly, I would love to hear from you. But that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and smash that like button. Leave a comment below. And of course, guys, please subscribe to the channel. Until next time, Nick fans. Peace.